Hello again, this is Tim Baldridge, and welcome to the tutorials on transducers. We're going to do a multi-part series on transducers. They touch so many aspects of closure and, and influence so much of uh, a normal closure development that uh, I thought it'd be a good idea to just do a big deep dive into transducers and how they work. I'm actually recording these ahead of time uh, before uh, Rich Hickey's Strange Loop talk um, because I want to start releasing these right after that talk as well as um, I'm going to have some time in there when I will have less time to make these videos, so I'm kind of getting stuff done ahead of time. But to start with, we want, I want to start with talking about what transducers are really all about. And, and I view them as pulling apart, uh, reducing, the uh, operations of reducing. And we'll see how many different sections there are in reducing. I, I think of about three or four different things that uh, a reduce function will do. Um, and we're kind of going to pull all those apart. Uh, but to start with, what are we talking about reduce when we say reducing? Well, let's say we have some data here. Um, and this is just uh, the numbers 1 through 10, right? So, uh, or 0 through 9, I guess. So, when we say map and filter, we can actually implement those via reduce. So, let's implement map. And we're going to call this dash map to um, differentiate it from closure uh, map. Um, and we have a function and we have a collection. Now, we could implement this very easily via reduce, right? So the input type, all right, here, we're just going to say reduce our function. Our starting collection is a vector, and then we have the input collection here. And this is actually going to be, um, let's see here. It's our mapping function. Uh, let's do f and value, and, um, and our reducing function is an accumulator and a value. So we're going to conj onto the accumulator the f of v, right? All right. And we can run that. And then we do map data, ink data, and we get the incremented numbers, right? Now this is eager, right? So we're not talking about laziness, we're just talking about the formal definition of what map would do. Map takes a collection and applies a function to every collection. Now we could have filter, right? And filter looks a lot like map, and set, except it only conges if and only if the predicate is true. So if f of v, then conj it onto there. Otherwise, we just return the accumulator, right? And there's filter. And we are going to instead going to supply to this odd and data. And we see that we have our, um, our values here. And we can easily compose these, right? We can do something like this. Data, map, ink, and uh, filter odd. Okay. Bingo. All right. So that works. But there's something, and I'm going to use the, the wonderful word that we all love to use, right? We're going to use the word complex. There is some complexing happening here in that we don't know what this function is right here, right? Um, actually, let's, let's uh, back up a step, and we're going to show another way that this is um, complexing, and that is we have this reduce every time, right? There's really not a reason why we need that reduce. We could move it outside of the function, right? So we could do def n map f of, uh, we, we could have our mapping function be something that has f, and then it defines a reducing function like so. And then we could say conj onto the um, ac of f of v, right? 
So now what we've done is said, you know what, we don't need this reducing logic. We can pull that out, right? So now we can write something like this. We can say reduce mapping ink, and then we have this, and we have data, right? Boom. Cool. So that's kind of neat, because what we've done then is we've, um, we have the ability to um, pull out this reducing logic. So we don't have that reducing logic implemented every all, all over the place. And you could probably also turn this into a lazy seek, right? Each value that comes into the lazy seek is simply we apply this mapping onto it. Except we have one more problem. And that problem is this conch right here. That's another level of complexing. We are assuming something about the collection. We are assuming that it is a conjugable collection, right? That is perhaps a bad assumption. Now, we could um, name this something. So how about something like, um, we could name it F, but we already have F up here. Uh, let's call it job for now, um, or task perhaps, but it's going to do something, and we don't know what that something is, and we really don't care. Um, so we're, we can put job up here, and then when we run it, uh, we get wrong number of args, so we have to put conj in here, and that works. But what if we wanted to create this beforehand, right? What if our um, reducing function was something like this? And we want to just say, it's just, it's just something that increments. We don't know what you're going to use this for, but it's just a, a pattern for how to do something. We really don't want to put conj up in here, because then that complexes it with the construction of our pipeline, right? So we could do this just fine, right? So there's that, and there's that. That works, but it's still kind of ugly. What we want is we want conj down here with the reduce, but the ability to pull the task out. So when we hit this problem, what do we do? Ah, another level of functions, right? So now we have this. Mapping is something that takes a function, and later on we supply the job to it, and from there we get a reducing function. So now we can remove this out of here, right? Boom. And down here, when we call RFN, we can pass it conj, and that'll make our reducing function. Boom. So now, this part of the code right down here can be completely separate. What we have wrapped up here together is the job we want to do, and the starting collection, and the data. And that's completely separate from our pipeline. Can we rewrite filter that way too? Well, of course we can. Filtering, f, fn of job, fn ac v. So we have this, this pattern, right? And then it's just the same thing we had before. If f of v, then job ac f, or, or v, otherwise just return the accumulator. So what's kind of really cool about this, and this is, this is the brilliant part of what Rich developed with transducers, is we've taken this idea of the job and abstracted it away. So now we don't have to care what it is. And we have filtering. We can just swap this out and it all just works. Can we still compose it? Well, yes, actually we can. Because the output, this, this reducing function here, right, expects two arguments. And the same right here. And the output of this filter, so let's think about this real quick. When we supply odd, the output is something that takes a job. Right? And from that, we get this, uh, and it, exp it expects that job to take two arguments, which is the same as this function here. So they actually compose with comp. So what we can do is say mapping ink filtering odd, and the output of this mapping 
is going to get passed into the next function and into the next function. So when we pass conj, it gets passed to um, filtering first, and then the output of filtering gets passed to mapping, and then the output of mapping returns this function here, right? So, so why is it? Why do we compose it this way? What, what comp does stuff backwards, right? This is going to execute first, then this. Well, that's kind of what we want because because uh, look at it a little bit, but it, it's basically that it injects the job in a backwards fashion. Um, stare at it a little bit; it'll make sense. So there. That's what we get, right? We do the mapping first, and then the uh, filtering. All right. So that is the guts of uh, transducers. In fact, um, sometimes in the code, the closure code, you'll see F1. But really, um, we're going to call it XF for now, for an X uh, transform. So this is the way I actually like writing it, is, is somewhat like this. There we go. All right, so that's the, the tutorial for today. Now, there are two other aspects of this that we need to kind of to tease apart and pull apart. Um, and we'll cover those in the next tutorials. Uh, but that's kind of the idea for this first tutorial, is that, is that the thing that we've decomplected here is this conj and the reduce. We've pulled those out so that these things right here really need to have no idea at all what um, is happening. Like It doesn't have to even really be a collection. It's just something... And, and we can see that here real quick. So we have RFN... And what is RFN? RFN is this, this function, right? It expects a job. Now that job could be something like this. It could be simply plus. And then what the function out of that expects is an accumulator and a value. Now why do we get 42 out of this? Well, the first thing we did was filter the odd, right? So it only will accept odd numbered values. Oh, so, sorry, uh, it filters the odd. So it increments though first. The first thing that happens is we passed in one to here. One got incremented. It is no longer odd. And so the addition doesn't happen. If we do two, it got incremented to three, adds it to 42, and so on and so forth, right? So we can go down here and say plus our accumulator is zero. Now what's going to happen? It sums all the numbers together after it runs it through this code, right? So there we go. We've completely abstracted away what is this job that's happening. And because of that, we can do all sorts of things. This, is, this, this code here is not building up lazy seeks in the middle. It's not building in intermediate, intermediate values. It's just adding integers. And this accumulator here comes in as an integer, and this becomes plus, and it's adding stuff together. Pretty awesome, huh? All right. Uh, that's the tutorial for today. Thank you for watching.